So far, the beginning of 2024 has been a very explosive eye-opening year of exposure, from Cat Williams to Monique. This time, we will look at some things that Monique said. Here is what she had to say. Tyler Perry called us up, right? And he said, I can see the pain in you and I can hear it. And I want to let you know that I, I, I would never do nothing to hurt you. But the conversation kept going on. Only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. He lied. Only for Tyler Perry to admit I was wrong. And when my movie Boo come out, I'm going to say that. Right? Now here's where... When you did that interview with Kat, I could respect how you do it. Because Kat said, you let them people lie in your face. And your response was, Kat, I don't know if they're lying or not. Right. Because I can only take them at their word. At their word. Right? Yes. Well, we sent you the audio mm -hmm. of Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to take me at my word. I want you to hear his word. And what did you hear that man saying? What did you hear that man saying? He said it. What did he say? Is that is Moni, you know you're not supposed to be recording people. No, no. No, no. Let me back up. Okay. Everything we did was legal. And here's where a black woman really gets the kick in the ass. Had I not recorded Tyler Perry, then it would have been my word, word against, his. against his. And then on top of that, it would have been, he's so powerful, we can't even pay no attention to that. Right. Well, now I have him on audio, which is legal to do mm -hmm. where we live. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have him on audio. And do you know what some people then said? Why would you record him? <laughs> Just like you sat there and said, you know what's unlegal to do. But did you hear what the man said? I, I violated you. Yeah. I mistreated you. Yeah. Do you know, Shannon, that's cost my family tens of millions of dollars? Yeah. Over a lie and a rumor? This has been one of many issues in the black community for decades. But before we delve into the conversation, let's look at the history of how black community got this way. During slavery in America, there was a law that was created to cause division. The Meritorious Manumission Act, enacted in the 1700s in Virginia, helped enslaved Africans to earn their freedom by performing good deeds that impressed their slave owners. This law encouraged enslaved individuals to inform their masters about fellow slaves planning rebellions or running away, creating a culture of snitching within the black community. Over time, this mindset persisted, leading to some black leaders prioritizing personal ambition over the collective liberation of their people. The Meritorious Manumission Act has had a profound impact on the black community throughout American history. It has resulted in a deep self-hatred among some black individuals, as they internalize the belief that their worth is tied to their proximity to whiteness and their ability to distance themselves from their own black identity. This mindset has perpetuated a culture of competition and individualism within the community. Now, let's get back to the topic. Here is more from Monique. Now we go to the Hoodie Awards. Tyler Perry is there, okay? Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry calls me in his room. Now when I go into Tyler Perry's room, his staff is in there. Now you ready to holler laughing? Yes. Okay, I take my security in there with me because I always want to have somebody with me, right? Right. Tyler Perry does this. <clears throat> and the people scattered. They all left out the room. I said, look at this shit right here. You saw me. And they all scattered. That wasn't the lights. That's for the people. You know, light clap, lights on. Lights off, because they got their asses up okay, out of there. Okay, 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 okay. So at the time, my security looked at me. I said, you don't work for Tyler Perry. You could. Touche. So Tyler Perry says to me, listen, Monique, we really need you to, you know, promote this film because if you get nominated for the Oscar, your next movie is going to be three to five million dollars. If you win it, your next movie is six to eight million dollars. I said, Tyler Perry, who you talking to? I'm a black woman. When they gonna pay that kind of money? No, I'm telling you, that's what it is. And, and, and if you just go and promote it, I said, listen, brother, you can pay me to promote it. Because at the time, now him and Oprah are producers on the film. Right. I said, you can pay me to do it. I don't care where the check come from, but y'all just gotta I, pay I me to do money. it. 
He said, I'm not in the habit of giving out money for free. I said, and I'm not in the habit of working for free. But you gave T.D. Jakes a check for a million dollars. But that's another story, and I'm back. Mm -hmm. So when he then says that, it's like, listen, we both mutually agree. You don't give out free money. I don't work for free. free. We hugged, Shannon. When we were done talking, we hugged. Do you hear me? Yes. We hugged like brother and sister. Like, it's cool. He understands. Right. Okay? Okay. Oprah Winfrey calls my husband. (laughs) She calls my husband. Okay. My husband explains to her what's going on. She says, there have been times I've had to draw the line in the sand. So my husband said, well, what is different between you and Monique? You've got to draw the line in your sand when you know they're asking you for too much. She said, you're absolutely right. And I understand your position. You're right in the position you're taking. No one seemed to hear that publicly. She said that privately. Now, when she said that, see, everything we're saying to you, it can be proven. She had him on speakerphone. And that when she was talking to him, Mm -hmm. in that room was a man named Reggie Wells, who just passed, who used to be Oprah Winfrey's makeup artist, Mm -hmm. who he had a conversation with me and my husband. Now, for you babies that's good with the little internet, we had a a show on called Monique and Sydney Finding a Way to Be Unoffended. Finding a way to be unoffended. Reggie Wells is on that show speaking about Oprah Winfrey. Reggie Wells said, Monique, I was there that day. He said, and when y'all got off the phone, he look, I looked at her and said, why don't you just pay this woman the money? She deserves it. And she looked at him and said, I won't be paying her nothing. And he said, that's not right. And you know it's not right. See, here's what's this. When we have our juggernauts, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, the Kevin Hart, these are our juggernauts of our community. These are the people that our babies say, when I grow up, I want to be that. I want to be like that. So we have to call those people to the mat and say, listen, what are you teaching our babies? You're feeding poison because you're showing them your private jet. I'm going to show you my mansion. I'm going to show you my fancy cars. But my character is shot and I'm bankrupt. I got a lot of money in my bank. It's more zeros than some of them can, than we can imagine. But their character, they are bankrupt. Those are bankrupt people. When looking over the years at the planned destruction of black society, you see the plethora of ways the black community has been neutralized. Racism has played a major role in this destruction. At same time, throughout history, there is many black people who chose to work for white supremacy instead of helping black community achieve black empowerment. People in black community who truly want to be liberated have been fighting against those outside of the black community who are destroying the community, along with the sellouts within the black community who are also helping to destroy any black progress. Black community have to stop looking at these black entertainers as leaders. Malcolm X tried to warn black community about this. Well, I I would uh, defend his sincerity and his commitment And more than that, I would say that just because a person is a Negro or a black American does not mean he's going to struggle for for Negro rights or for for jobs for Negroes or anything else. I think that today you could point to a large number of of Negro leaders who have consistently betrayed Negroes in a whole host of areas. They aren't really Negro leaders. These are puppets that have been put in front of the Negro community by white liberals. These are parrots that have been put in front of the Negro community by white liberals. You can't name me. A Negro leader who has been a Negro leader who has been betray, who has betrayed Negroes who is not who has not been endorsed, sanctioned, uh, subsidized, and supported by the white liberals. Some black celebrities, despite their prominence and access to wealth, are out of touch with the struggles of everyday black people, making them inadequate representatives of the broader community. Malcolm X goes on to warn against the temptation for prominent figures to prioritize their own interests or compromises with oppressive systems over genuine advocacy for social change. He cautions that such detachment can lead to a loss of authenticity and effectiveness in fighting for the rights and empowerment of African Americans. In closing, for the black community to progress, people in the community have to stop selling each other out and work towards black unity and empowerment. Hope you find the information in this video informative. Feel free to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thanks for watching the video.